So we're gonna change it up and we're gonna be looking more into Omniverse now and how to really use it. Now at the moment, as you can see, we've got our two main characters. I've got some cameras set up, but what we're gonna be looking at today is the sequencer. These two characters are from iClone and I've done the whole animation in Omniverse. So we can just see how nice the scene looks. It's a little bit laggy and that's just because I'm recording at the moment as well. So let's just jump back into real time just so it runs a little bit smoother. And to open the sequencer, I'm gonna click Window, Animation, Sequencer. So we can increase the size of this and have a look around. Now, the first thing I wanna do is bring in the animations of the characters. So if we kind of come back to where my characters are, so we save them under characters, I'm going to select the armature, click and drag, and I'm just gonna place it here. There we go, I'm just gonna line that up with zero. Let's also go back and select our secondary character and we'll dump that one in there. So now we have those character animations within the sequencer here. Now, if I wanted to kind of like split up the animation, I can select this icon here, split kit, clips, and then we can just click and drag and move that animation. So if you really want to fine tune that animation, this is kind of how we do it. That's, that's pretty much the basics of the sequencer. It's pretty much just like a video editor. Now splitting up sound, so if I were to bring in an audio file and splitting up audio files isn't 100% at the moment, but I know that's gonna be fixed in future iterations, but it's just something to keep in mind. But what we will do is kind of start setting up what does the scene look like in terms of cameras. So from here, let's kind of just cycle through my cameras. I can come up here where it's perspective and change it to camera. So we've got wide shot, we've got it on this chap, and we've got it on the Frenchman, and then number three does nothing. Once you've actually found that you've got a really nice view, you can actually lock it. So now I can no longer move it. It is a lifesaver. This is one of my biggest complaints when I first started using Omniverse. And I think within about a week or two, there was an update that was pushed and it introduced this locking feature. So I know the start of the animation is going to be our Frenchman. So I can bring in camera two and we can bring it on its own layer. Now we can have the whole sequence like this and have our individual cameras going up and down, or we could go delete, right click, and create shot track. Either or setting it up doesn't really matter. This just looks a little bit neater. So we'll bring in camera two, dump that in. Now, as you can see, when I'm moving, nothing is happening. Now, if I were to click on this little camera icon, as I cycle through, it's gonna change the camera angles based on what is in the sequencer. That option is also available in cameras and we can see sequence camera sync. Now from here, I might add in um, our camera, camera one, I think it was. I'm just gonna lock camera. Yep, so we go into a wide shot and I can click and drag and bring that one in and I'm just gonna minimize this. It doesn't matter about the size of this clip. So even if I have it this short, it'll stay on this camera until it hits something else. So I am just gonna jump out into perspective and just have a look when he starts walking. Let's turn off that use of sequence. And where does he walk in? Where are you walking? About here, buddy. So that means probably about this point here, we can add in, he jumps to the next camera, camera, uh, sorry, we'll turn on sequence camera sync and then it'll flick to the next camera. So as it's playing, blah, 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 watching the animation, and then we have him walk in, and then that kind of gives us a little bit more of an establishing shot. And then I'll minimize that one. Let's jump into, I think it's camera, camera through one, and then it kind of focuses now on him chatting. Mm, um, as he says. So as you can see, the sequencer is pretty much just like a video editing application, just kind of moving stuff around to fix it. Now there is also the curve editor and that's available in Windows Animation Curve Editor. And now you can kind of see that we have like an animation graph in a way, depending on what you call it. Now I kind of want to add in a car to go through the background. So like we spoke about in the first video, Let's find a car. I am just gonna filter Sketchfab. And you can see we've got a ton of cars that we can pick from. Now, I don't really wanna have a high fluent. Ah, let's just make it a Porsche. 
And from here, I'm just going to go ahead and create. Hmm, actually, I'm just going to put it into. Uh, let's just create a new folder. Create create um, X form, which is kind of like an empty for those of you who are Blender users. Let's just select that F2 to rename, and this is just gonna be assets. I'm gonna click and drag the car into the assets folder. There we go. So let's jump out into perspective. I am going to turn off sequence, sequence of camera sync. So I can now move around. Where is my car? To find the asset, I can click on it and press F, and that'll locate the asset for me. Um, what on earth is that? So this has some sort of ground plane. Let's just go ahead and delete that plane. I am just going to select the mesh of the car and we are just going to bring it up to zero. So let's reset by clicking those blue buttons. There we go. Just manually scale it. Uh, it looks around the right sizing. Yep. Good enough for me. And I'm just going to put that into its place. Make sure it's sitting on the road, even though there is no road, that's fine. Now, to rig this car is a whole different tutorial, and I'm not going to bother about doing that now because the car is in the background, I'm just going to fake it. So, what we're going to do is I'm just going to position it there we go, just stout down a little bit more into the curve editor with the Sketchfab model selected. Actually, we can probably go, yep. And now from here, I can add in a new key and beautiful so we can just kind of like guesstimate how fast this car is going to go let's maybe go frame 130 let's move the car over and then i'm going to add in another key now you can kind of see that graph just goes off tap if i were to click on frame all now we've got that nice graph curve but you have to remember this is you know pretty big distances so the numbers kind of blow out uh, as we see the car kind of slowly starts and then starts slowing down again if we just want to go linear we can select we can select all the frames and then click on the linear and now it's just going to have a constant drive so as you can see a little bit fast let's grab that and where it says free, I'm actually gonna change this to horizontal. So now that's gonna lock it in the horizontal position. So I can move it left and right, but not up and down. That's, uh, that's a very handy feature when you're doing something like this, because we've got the distances right, but not the timing right. There you go, just something in the background. Obviously, if we now were to come back into the sequencer, let's just jump into this and we will see Hopefully the car come past. Wow. I think we might have to move it over a little bit more and maybe scale it up as well. With the scaling, I can deselect everything. Well, actually, we'll just select these three. I am going to select everything and just go delete because I don't want the keyframes for scale to be there. So now when I come in and we go mm, 1.2, it's just that little bit bigger. Let's go into the curve editor. I just want to frame everything. Oops, we'll select these keyframes, frame everything. I do want this car to travel further. So if we kind of come to this keyframe, I can now change the vertical. There we go. go over there, mate. And then I'll check this one as well. And you can go back. Whoa, 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 whoa. And <laughs> Let's just select our X. We'll bring it down. There we go. So it's behind. There we go. <laughs> Great sound effects. Well done, Marco. So in the next video, we're going to be talking about render settings and rendering out your animation.